Hi, uh, welcome to WebPixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon um, and I'm joined by regular contributor Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi, Adam. Good you're, to see you. You're looking very blue. Um, yes. Yeah, this is from our Bahamas trip all those years ago. Gosh, is it really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it, was, it was very blue. Yeah, brilliant. So um, today I'm going to ask Alex to deploy his crystal ball um, and predict what the next camera is going to look like. No, I, not really. I, what, what I'm really going to do is discuss sort of what our wish list would be for our camera gear um, for the future. Um, and hmm. so so what features do you want on your next camera, Alex, when you when and if you choose to upgrade? OK, well, I, I think, you know, as always, the job really that the, you know, the marketing slash engineering departments of the camera companies have is to make products that we want. Yep. And if they don't make the steps big enough, people won't buy them. And the camera technology has become, you know, so good now, so mature. It's, you know, it's harder and harder for them to make gains. But if they want the sales, more and more important than they do. Yeah. So it, it is a really interesting time. Any of that tech they've been kind of holding back. Yeah. It's not, you know, um, it's not the time to hold stuff back now. I think they really have to throw all the gear, all the all the toys they can at the cameras if they want us to buy them. Yeah. And I think that makes it really interesting. I, I think one of the challenges that we have currently and I don't want this conversation to get derailed into this, but it's kind of inevitable, is that, you know, all the camera companies are putting more and more energy into their mirrorless offerings. Mm. And I, you, I feel that that's the area we're going to see the biggest jumps. Yes. Because they, they kind, you know, it's clear that they want us all in there. Um, it enables them to produce product for both the, you know, filming, for, you know, for multimedia use, for filming and for stills photography, yeah. better than an SLR adapted to to filming can do yeah. so you know, i see that as something that's just going to be you know we're going to see more and more toys in that area yeah, for tiny. me yeah, yeah for uh, there's there's a few things that the mirrorless offerings would need to do which would be on my list wish list the first is that um i'll just i can start anywhere but the first is synchronization speed a lot of the mirrorless cameras yep. and a lot of the cameras in general have limitations on flash synchronization yep. as underwater photographers I would like across the board there to be much more freedom from that. And I know that, you know, Pavel and some of the um, um, the camera, the strobe manufacturers are, are fighting it from their end yep. in giving us high speed flash sync. But wouldn't it be great if the camera manufacturers, particularly with mirrorless cameras, were, you know, giving us much more freedom to use a much wider range of flash synchronization speeds. Yeah, that would really get me excited about cameras. So I think, you know, you know, as we had, I think, with the old D70, which could sync at any speed because it used a, an electronic shutter. Yep. I, I, you know, definitely like to see more use of electronic shutters and therefore full flexibility of flash synchronization speed. Absolutely. That'd be great as an underwater photographer. Yep. Also in the mirrorless realm, I would like, I, you know, I'm excited for electronic viewfinders to become as good as optical viewfinders. Yep. And I would love that, you know, the, you know, anyone who's shot an optical viewfinder underwater, a classic wide angle underwater photo is you, you put your camera, you do your vertical, you've got silhouetted reef in the foreground that you're going to light with strobes, and then the sun in the background and a diver in front of it. When you look through that with an, an optical viewfinder, you can see everything in the reef and you can see everything in the water column yeah. and the sun. And everything. When you look at that same scene with an electronic viewfinder, you either have a totally silhouetted reef and you yeah. can see what's going on in the water column, or you'd be able to see the details on the reef and get your composition right there, and it's just whited out in the water column. Yeah. Eventually, electronic viewfinders are going to overtake optical viewfinders, and that's what I would love to see, is that an, an optical viewfinder that can show me more dynamic range than my eyes can see. Yeah. You know, optical viewfinder with, with some clever processing, you know, in real time going through it. So that would be really, really nice. Even if it was kind of like a push a button, and, and say, OK, I'm not going to move the camera. You don't have to worry about the scene changing, but process this image for me. It is so way. Yeah. The other big thing I think that all the full frame mirrorless offerings need to have is some proper lenses for underwater photography. Absolutely. And the lack of dedicated fisheye, whether it's Sony full frame, whether it's Canon full frame mirrorless, whether it's Nikon full frame mirrorless, that is a big omission. And I think that will be something that, you know, that we really want to see. Yep. Also, some more dedicated macro lenses coming online specifically for those formats. I know those are probably a little bit closer than the fish eyes, yep. but I think those things I'd really like to see coming along. Yep. Um, and then in general, I think we'd all love 
some lenses a little, you know, a little bit more tuned to underwater photography and, and lenses that we've had versions of in the past. So I think all full frame photographers would love a lens that was a fisheye zoom, but instead of being, you know, the circular eight to 15, yeah, yeah. it was a, a 15 to 25. Yep. So it starts as a as a full frame fisheye and then you can zoom in a bit exactly yep. like the 10 to 17 fisheye zoom does the Tokina, but built really well, built with really good optics, built as good as the Canon or Nikon 815, but just a 15 to 25 or 27 or whatever it ended up being yep. as a fisheye. That would be a wonderful underwater lens. And then I think we'd also like a, a really nice macro zoom. Yep. You know, the big question that underwater photographers ask all the time is, is, you know, on full frame is 60 or 105, 60 or 105. Wouldn't it be great to have a lens that could do that as a zoom, yep. as we used to have with the 70 to um, um, whatever it was, 180. One, one, 180. Yep. But that was always an F4. It wasn't that great. And you probably don't need something that's as long as a 180 underwater. Yeah. So, you know, something like a 50 to 120 macro zoom on yep. full frame would be a killer. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely yeah, killer. You know, awesome, not that big. The, the, also, the barrel length doesn't change, so yep. it can go in a housing and, and, it, and it's, it does all the zooming internally. Internal, folk, and, internal zoom, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and it goes down to one to one still, not just one to two. Yeah. I think that would be a fantastic underwater lens to have, yeah, that, not that, too big as well. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so we basically. Can keep coming. Yeah, we've, we've reduced our lens choice. We now only need to buy two lenses. Fantastic. We just need the, the new uh, the new fisheye and, and the new macro zoom. That's it. Yeah, I don't, Job done. I don't have any information either of those in development, but they no. would be lovely. No, these are this is a wish list. I mean, I think for me, I think that the mirrorless the mirrorless versus SLR debate, I think, is really redundant. Um, I I'm really not bothered about the technology. Um, you know, as long as I can get the lens choices and and as you mentioned, the, the EVF problems. You know, I think it's inevitable we probably will all end up shooting mirrorless. And I can see there are technical advantages to mirrorless. I'm not, you know, I'm not I'm not I'm blind to that. But really, I think it's a fairly redundant kind of choice. I think the other thing that obviously in the past, certainly I remember before the release of the D810, uh, D800, sorry, um, I was shooting, I think, 20, 20 megapixel cameras, 20, 24 megapixel cameras and thinking, well, I don't need more resolution. That's it. Resolution is dead as an argument mm -hmm. for me. And um, and the um, the fact is that the along came Nikon with the D800 um, and obviously subsequently D810, D850. Um, and, and I've learned to quite like more resolution. Now, I, I'm in the same position right now. I, I I don't think more resolution would be a selling point for me in either direction. But if more was to be on offer, I'd probably take it. Um, you know, yeah. So if they were produce a 60 megapixel camera, I'd probably say fine. Although it's not a major motivation. If they released a 45 megapixel camera, I'd also be you know okay. Um, I think I, I'm similar also with ISO in that, you know, I love the ISO flexibility of the modern cameras but don't tend to use the extremes very much at all. Mm. So I don't feel I need, you know, even more in the extremes. Mm. You know, I just love the fact that they're also good, you know, up to 1600 at least in underwater shooting terms in, in you know, and I think that's something that I, you know, I'm very happy with that, that you know, as, as, a, as a way. And I think the growth of water contact optics to some extent as well, um, which is obviously somewhat, somewhat different. Oh, so you're going beyond. Uh, sorry, yeah, I knew, oh, right, I, I knew yeah. We'd, never, we'd, never, <laughs> we'd never manage to limit it, would we? But, but I think what they have is they've reduced the demand for extreme high ISO performance as well. I would like another stop or two of ISO performance, to be honest. I'm, I'm, I, I, I shoot quite a lot in darker conditions, um, and, and I, I think you know having another stop or two would be nice. But I, I would offset that by saying that, that the fact that I can now shoot at much. Um, much more open apertures using water contact optics somewhat removes that from being a major kind of selling point for me. Um, yeah. So something I think that that um, will definitely be featured in the cameras of the future is is frame rates and shooting speed. And I have to say, for me, it's 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 a complete red herring for underwater. I I, I you know for me that that I, I very very rarely have my camera on continuous eye underwater, um, and I, I can't. The, the, the people that do the big animals in the blue and the action in the blue, they like it. Mm. Um, but yeah, for for norm, for you know, kind of non scuba dive, for you know the not some of the non scuba diving applications yeah. benefit from the high frame rates, but I don't think they need to be significantly higher than they are now. And, and you'll always be limited by your strobe recycle time. So the moment you're introducing strobe lighting, that's the the choke point, not the the frame rate of the cameras. So so I I think that's a bit of a red herring. 
Um, you know, I, I, I'm quite sure that the next generation of cameras, they will be touting higher frame rates and saying, you know, you should buy this camera because it's now shooting at 25 frames a second or whatever the, the next the next big thing is. And I'm not it's a lot of deleting. <laughs> it is, yeah, it is. I'm, I'm not convinced that that's a major selling point for me. And the other thing is that we haven't mentioned, Alex, and I think is really important. I think the most important single feature for my next camera is it fits in my existing housings, actually. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And also costs only about 25 pence. <laughs> That's the one, yeah. And uses the existing cards, same batteries. That's what we need. So, I mean, upgrading a camera is always going to be, for us as underwater photographers, will always be an expensive thing, simply because we're not just buying a camera. Um, all the other bits that we have to buy to fit with it, in particular, obviously, housings, mean that it's a much bigger decision, possibly, than it is for, for people shooting more on land. So uh, so if the, the D, D8, whatever it is, 880, whatever they're going to call it, fits in D850 housing, it, that would make the decision much more easy, much, much easier as well, I think. Um, so we just send this 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 wet pixel live to Nikon. to Sony, to Canon and Nikon, and we're, we're sorted. That's it, yeah, fix the things to us, definitely. That's brilliant. Thank you very much, Alex. Um, it's, a, it's a useful discussion. Um, and we'll see what 2021 brings us. Hopefully it brings us some, some new toys. OK, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to thank Nauticam for sponsoring this episode. Um, please feel free to add your wish list or what you'd like to see in the cameras that are released this year in the comment section or on the WebPixel forum. And drop us a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.